Hi, Brian Beam for Red Giant, here to talk about the new features in Trapcode Mirror, part of Trapcode Suite Release 15. So the big new feature in Mirror is the ability to load 3D models. You can do a lot of neat things with it, and we're going to show you how. So let's go into Geometry, and if we go to Base Geometry and we click Plane, we've now got an option to select OBJ model. So if we select OBJ and then click this Choose OBJ button, we're going to see access to a whole bunch of models that are included with Mir 3. So let's go ahead and click the heart and load that in. And when we bring it in, right away it just looks like a, a big white solid heart. So let's go ahead and uh, add a light and see what happens. So let's create a point light. Maybe uh, make it magenta and click OK. And immediately we can see that we're casting light onto our object. Um, we can create another light. Let's make this one a little teal or something. And if we move this one over, yeah, you can see that we can have multi-directional lighting on our 3D object. Um, so you can also control the size. Um, if we go to size XYZ, we can make it bigger or smaller. If we click on this XYZ linked and change it to XYZ individual, um, now we can control whether we want that to be taller or fatter or wider. And you can also rotate it. So, you know, we've got our X, Y, and Z dials over here. And let's go ahead and just add a quick expression that says time times 60. And we'll hit enter. And now we can see our heart starting to spin. So not only can we rotate and scale and play with 3D objects, but we can also import our own. So there's two different ways to do it. The first is to use the OBJ picker. And there's a button up here called Add New OBJ. And if we click that, it's going to open up our Finder. And I've downloaded some objects ahead of time, and one I love using for whatever reason is a banana. So let's import our banana. And it's going to add that to our favorites. And uh, we can click OK, and it's going to load up. And you can see that we have put our very moody looking banana into the scene. So the other way that you can bring objects in is to use the normal After Effects project. So if we double click and we go to banana, we can see that our banana is here. And so if we double click the banana, it's going to import that as an OBJ. We can drag that into our scene, hide it, send it down to the bottom. And then if we go back to our mirror settings, we can select the banana from the OBJ settings where there's a pull down menu. If we click and we can see that our banana OBJ is there. So there's a couple of other controls depending on how the OBJ was set up in the animation program that it was created in. You might need to ignore the UVs or invert the Z. Let's look at this button here. There's a Create Null button. As soon as we hit that, now we have a null that can control our orientation, control rotation, position, and we can, we can do all our animating from this null. That's a really useful thing. Like in this shot, they're using the null on the missile to be able to parent the particular emitter to it. So let's take a look at some of the other settings. So normalize can be really helpful if you have a very large or a very small model. Uh, it brings it down to a more manageable size to work with. It's on by default. Really, all you need to know is if you're getting really weird results with the object that you brought in, if you click normalize, there's a good chance that it will solve your problems. Now let's show how to texture the object. So. One of the things that came with my banana were two textures. So we have 
banana, and we have banana with the mark. So let's bring in the banana with the mark. So we've got our texture, and we can drag that into our scene. Let's go ahead and delete our lights for the moment. So we're going to turn off banana mark and just throw that down to the bottom. Shift command left bracket is your friend. I use it all the time. Um, so if we go back to mirror three and go to texture. Um, it's going to allow us to tell where the texture is. So all we need to do is click texture drop down and select banana mark. And because there's already UVs that are on our model, um, we have our banana with the texture on it. Okay, let's look at another setup. I've got a checkerboard texture. If we take a look at our checkerboard texture, you can see that it is just a big graphic with a whole bunch of black and white checkerboard boxes. So let's turn that off again. We'll bring up our heart layer. And again, if we go to texture and then click on the texture layer, we can hit our checkerboard and it will automatically apply the texture to the object. And we can see that it is applied. Um, there's a couple of different transfer modes that you can play with if uh, it, you don't think that it looks quite right. So we can do a frontal mapping. which is basically going to shoot it forward and stick it to the front and have it wrap around. Um, and same thing with the back side, which is shooting it from the side and then stretching out on the front. Cube, which is kind of projecting a big cube around the object and shrinking it down. Sphere. And cylinder. There's also camera projection. Um, different textures are gonna be mapped onto these objects better or worse in different ways. And that's what these other texture mapping tools are for. A lot of times you'll be able to just leave it on UE. And then, you know, we could do something like texture scale to change X and Y to like 200%. And it's gonna scale up the texture on there. Or if we go down to 0.5, now we're gonna make that texture more dense. A great example of what you could use the spherical map for is being able to create a planet. So we've got a, another mirror set up and we've got a Mars texture loaded in. And let's go ahead and just set this to our Mars map. So if we set the texture setting to sphere, now if we bring our camera up, we can see that uh, we can fly to Mars. And when you bring everything together, it could end up looking something like this. This is a little ship animation that I threw together. Um, brought my ship in, brought the UV in, and it was very easy to set up a cool little example. It's a really fun tool to play around with. Let's take a look at how the repeater works with the objects in Mirror. So let's go to Geometry and choose Object. And this time we're going to select the Sphere Array. So if we load that in, we get our white objects. Let's create a light quick. And now we're going to go to repeater and let's set it to 10. Then let's rotate this on the X. And now let's translate in Z. And you can see that as we do, let's move that down. As we do, it uh, spreads out into the repeater. So we can rotate it. We can translate it. Let's scale that down some more. Then let's add some more instances. Let's change that to 20. And then we can also add our fractals. So if we increase the amplitude, you can see that this is starting to distort. So we can go into 
our fractal. Maybe lower the frequency. Set it a time expression. So time times 50 into evolution. And now we've got our objects distorting. You know, one of the reasons that I really like playing in Mirror 3 is that it's fast. Um, so with the banana that I brought in the other day, I ended up creating this silly little synchronized bananas project. And this is just repeated bananas and uh, just some translation and distortion. You could use this for a channel ID or, you know, new animated feature featuring synchronized dancing bananas. I like the hero banana that comes through the shot. There we go, hero banana. So we've got our tube of spheres that we set up and we want to throw a texture on it. And we can do it the way that we did it before, but you know, you don't always know exactly how you're going to do that and it might not look right and it can be kind of complicated. And so there's now an option in Mirror to be able to use this material dropdown to select from a bunch of different surface presets. So surface presets make it much easier to get a basic setup. So if you're looking to create something like a wireframe or a smooth surface, it'll help you get there much faster. So let's take a look at the wireframe. And as soon as we apply it, we start to get a really different look and it's properly applied to all of these spheres. We could fly through it. Um, but we've also got things like plastic and mirrored metal and anodized aluminum and as we make these selections you can see all of these settings in here changing and adjusting um, and all of them are tweakable so if we go into color and change this over to green you can see that it is affecting the look of the way all these objects are rendering so I've gone back to Chrome and this looks cool, but I'm not entirely happy with this reflection and it's reflecting back this blue disc. Um, and let's see if we can change it to something else. So if we go to reflections and lighting, we've got a whole bunch of environment maps that are now included. And if we click desert horizon, let's select church interior. And as soon as we do, wow, that's kind of cool. Um, totally changes the look of that scene. And if you go and select custom, you can drop in your own environment to extend the look even further. So that's a look at the new features. Thanks for watching.